Most of us have heard about osteoporosis, weakening of our bones as we age. But did you know that more and more people are keeping strong bones into their 80s and 90s? It's true, and we'll tell you how. Plus, do your old-time TV memories include Jack LaLanne, television's original fitness guru? He's still going strong, and we've got him. I'm Mary McDonough, and this is McDougal MD. Oh, hey, hi, Mary. John. It's been one of many great hugs. Thank you. Oh, thank you. But you know, sometimes when people hug each other, their bones break. Really? That's right. They break ribs. You just give them a, a simple little hug. And, oh, dear. And that's not right. And to get to that point, you have you have to lose about 50 to 75 percent of your bone. Mm -hmm. And we call that disease osteoporosis, and that's a now a household word. Mm -hmm. And people think it's just a natural part of getting older, or they think it's due to estrogen pill deficiency. But it doesn't have to be. Or calcium deficiency. Calcium they think deficiency. It's calcium deficiency. Mm -hmm. And they have so much misinformation. Let me, let me tell you why people need to start questioning what they're doing to prevent osteoporosis. What you need to do is you need to look around the world uh -huh. and study different populations of people, see how they live, mm -hmm. what they eat, and how strong their bones are. What you find surprisingly is the people who consume the least calcium don't drink any milk, no cheese, no calcium pills, yes. no Tums. <laughs> the least calcium in the world have the strongest bones, the least hip fractures. And these are people from uh, uh, rural Africa, for example, say, New Guinea, uh -huh. and uh, Hong Kong, Singapore, they've been studied. Rural China, they've been studied. No these, osteoporosis. Extremely rare to non-existent. Huh? In fact, in the British literature in the 1980s, they used to argue in the letters to the editor whether they could find a single hip fracture in a black African woman. Now, of course, when you take it and move the African lady to the United States, she starts to get hip fractures almost as common as the white. And the Asian, who again has very little hip fractures while living on a diet of starches and vegetables and very low dairy, or very mm -hmm. low dairy intake and very low calcium intake, when they move that Asian lady to the United States, she has hip fractures even more than the white in this country. Okay, so what can we do to so the, help ourselves? Well, the first thing you got to do is get rid of that calcium myth. It's not about calcium. It's not, it's not, well, calcium is important, but you get plenty of calcium in all in of all your, your foods. foods. Let me ask you, where, where does calcium come from? From it's, no. it's kind of a, it's kind of a trick question. I don't know. Where exactly. I mean, well, I would immediately will, think say, of like from milk. They'll or say milk, from or, milk. Or maybe they'll say plants. But mm -hmm. if you think about it for a minute, where does it really come from? It comes from the ground. Oh. It's, it's little rocks, little minerals uh, in so the ground, and they dissolve in watery solutions, and the calcium and other minerals are taken up by the roots. And goes into the food. That's right, and then you go and eat the plants, so you get and your calcium. And what plants are high in calcium? Doesn't matter. They all have plenty all of calcium. Broccoli. You cannot lose unless it's been a highly refined plant. Ah. Okay, so once you decide that it's not due to calcium deficiency, and it's really not. In fact, uh, you won't find a a uh, honest scientific textbook or nutritional textbook that says that osteoporosis is due to calcium deficiency. They say it's due to bone loss, but loss of bone material. Then you start looking for other possibilities. Then why are we losing the bone? What? Well, <laughs> I'm going to get to that. I'm going to get to that. It has to do primarily with the animal foods in our diet. Now let me tell you how it works. Uh, you realize that meat, and when I say meat I mean poultry and beef and chicken mm -hmm. uh, and fish, uh, these are muscle foods. And these muscle foods, if you look at them, if you look at their, their nutritional makeup, you find out that they're very acidic. They have lots of amino acids in them and also uh, very, uh, very many sulfur-containing amino acids that break down into sulfuric acid. So the overall load that it delivers to the body is acid. Eggs are the same way. Mm. Now the body is slightly basic or alkaline. So when you add this acid load to the body, mm -hmm. you have to buffer it. The primary buffering system of the body is the bones. Okay. So the bones dissolve, and that's the first step in losing your bones. Now, the animal proteins, the animal amino acids, the, the, the acid itself, uh, <clears throat> all of this goes to the kidney and changes kidney physiology. And then what happens is the bone material you've released into your bloodstream is now excreted through the kidneys, through the urinary system, and out into the toilet. And in the process, mm -hmm. that bone sometimes solidifies and you get little round bones in your kidney system. We call those calcium kidney stones. Ah, okay. So there's, there's two different diseases. So if you want to prevent osteoporosis, the primary thing you have to do is you have to keep your animal food intake to special occasions, like turkey for Thanksgiving or fish mm -hmm. for a special night, you, uh, night out. You can't have an animal protein-based diet. 
And so taking calcium <clears throat> pills will do nothing? Well, it does a little bit, but not does much. A bit. And certainly you don't want to get your source of calcium from milk because there's too many hazards from milk. You're talking about mm -hmm. a food that uh, will make you fat because it's uh, so high in energy and so high in fat. We're talking about a food that has been condemned for causing heart disease and possibly strokes, possibly cancers, uh, adult type diabetes. So if you're going to err on the side of taking calcium, take, take uh, a, calcium pills. Pill and then you cover it all bases. But your milk. It's not a solid recommendation. There are a few other things that people have to keep in mind if they want to take advantage of everything they can do. Okay. Exercise. Exercise. Oh, yeah. yeah absolutely and important. You have keep a those stronger bones body strong. to protect the bones. And there's some minor issues such as sodium intake, uh huh, caffeine. Oh, phosphates my favorite. And, yeah, I know. <laughs> phosphates and sodas would be another issue. Uh huh. And uh, I, I think if you really pay attention to the diet, you get out there and get exercise, then you'll be able to have bones for a lifetime. Our creator did not design a woman or a man to live to be 85 years old with a set of bones that only last until they're 50. It makes mm -hmm. no sense at all. They're mm -hmm. supposed to last for a full lifetime of a man and woman. They will if you take good care of them. And good care of them is good nutrition like so many things and also uh, a good lifestyle, good healthy lifestyle. And speaking of eating well and having a healthy lifestyle, John, you are gonna love our next guest. Just ahead on McDougal MD, get ready to pump up your attitude with Jack LaLanne. So what I say, exercise king, nutrition's queen, put them together, you got a kingdom. This is not the time to find out what your health care plan covers and does not cover. This is not the time to learn how to submit a medical insurance claim and get it paid. Excuse me, I am looking for a month less. Excuse me, I came in about half an hour less ago. This is not the time to figure out what to do if a dispute arises with your health care company. When you have a health insurance problem, you are not alone. Your state insurance department is available to help you deal with health insurance questions. If you need help, contact your state insurance department. It's not just what I get to be. It's not just who I get to meet, but where I get to go. Get to go! Get to go! Let's forget about being sick. Remembering. Remembering. Remembering how to be a kid. How to laugh out loud. That anything is possible. Leaving worry on the doorstep. Feeling ten feet tall. Making plans for the future. I'm still making plans for the future. I'm still making plans for the future. Welcome back. You know, Mary, I used to watch Jack LaLanne when he was younger and John, when I was younger. I watched Jack LaLanne when I was growing up. My mom used to exercise to his show. You are going to love this interview. You know, he's a vegetarian. I, I'm really excited about it and an inspiration. I mean, he does things that, uh, that people much younger couldn't even think of doing. It's very true. And you'll enjoy him too. I recently had a chance to visit with this man and he is as inspiring today as he was 30 or 40 years ago. Mr. Jack LaLanne. Was there a specific event that happened in your life that started you on your exercise program? Oh yeah, I was a sick kid up till 13 or 14. I, I was a complete full-blown sugarholic. When I was about four years old, I was a real psycho. I got into sugar. My mother used to appease me all the time. You know, go to the potty chair or do this. She'd always be ordering with candy and ice cream. And, and I got hooked on sugar, boy, that was it. And so they took me out of school for six months. And it was during that time I attended a health lecture. Did you stop eating sugar? Immediately. I went home. After that lecture, that lecture said that if we, regardless of our age, if we obeyed nature's laws, we could be born again. What are nature's laws? The exercise you do, the food you eat. What on earth ever possessed you to start your amazing feats? I had to prove that you could be a champion athlete 
and still be a, a Mr. America type. And you could be 40 years old and still, because most of the people, you're over 40 years old, you're over the hump. So I said, how am I going to prove this? So I put handcuffs on, jumped off from Alcatraz prison, which is supposed to have been an escape crew. No, no prisoners ever escaped from there. And I swam handcuffed over to San Francisco. And this got international publicity, you know. And every three or four years, I would think of something more difficult. Then I did on the Art Baker You Asked For It show, I did 1,000 push-ups in 23 and a half minutes. And then another birthday, I did 100 handstand press-ups in five minutes. And then on um, Lake Ochinoko in Japan, I towed 65 boats with 6,500 pounds of wood pulp and thing, handcuffed and shackled. I pulled those two miles. You have accomplished so much in your life. What is, in your mind, your greatest achievement? I have one thing in my mind to help every man, woman, and child, to get them motivated and educated about what they are missing in life if they're not in good physical and mental condition. So you can't separate the mind and the body. It's impossible. Mm. That's why people get up in the morning, they get aches and pains. It affects your mind. Your energy is down, your vitality, your self-esteem is down. People should get up in the morning with energy and vitality, you know, and disease-free and pain-free. See, anything that happens to Jack LaLanne, anything, good or bad, I made it happen. What is your, what is your daily routine when you get up in the morning? I get up at 5 o'clock, and I work out for two hours, and uh, every three or four weeks I change my program completely. And what exactly is your diet? What is your combination of diet and exercise? If man makes it, don't eat it. You name me one thing you put in your body that man hasn't fooled around with. The air you're breathing right now, the water you drink, your fruits, your vegetables, insecticides, pesticides, artificial fertilizer, all your animals now with stilbisterol, their high bred things. And man's got his tongs, too much sugar, too much salt. That's all the reasons why one has to exercise vigorously. See, exercise keeps up your immune system. So what I say, exercise king, nutrition's queen, put them together, you got a kingdom. <laughs> and you don't, you don't have to be a nut about this. If people can't get, say, five raw vegetables a day, now is there anybody can't do that? At least three pieces of fresh fruit every day. And the grains you eat, instead of all these processed white stuff, you know, brown natural rice and barley and wheat and oats and beans, all these, these are all natural things in their natural state. So do you take vitamins? Oh, 50 or 60 a day at least. Everything natural vitamins, natural vi enzymes, vitamins and minerals and herbs. You absolutely have to take extra vitamins and minerals today because everything is picked green, then it's stored, then it's cooked. Cooking kills. You cook things most over 100 degrees, most of the, the nutrition's gone. So you've got to replace that. I know that you had, had gyms and health clubs from a long time ago, and now there are so many health clubs, and especially kids who are trying to get healthy, and there's steroid use now. What are your thoughts on that? You know, if you take steroids, it's just like going to bed with a rattlesnake. It's going to get you, there's no doubt about it. But you'll never, ever get rid of steroids as long as the standards are all these big muscles in the veins sticking out. The emphasis in America, they don't care. It's winning. They don't care how they win. They'll do anything. With someone who's watching the show and they're a bit older and they haven't necessarily uh, kept up with an exercise regime, what do you suggest for them as far as diet and exercise? Okay, you're 70, 80, 90 year old people. Right now they're what? I want you to take care of it. Get your feet up there and hold it. If you can't do that, you're in bad shape. No. You know, you can't believe what we are finding out now. They take people who are 95 years old, they double their strength and double their endurance in six to eight weeks with weight training. You know, everything now, see, I've been preaching this now for over 50 years about building muscle. The older you are, the more you should exercise. They take people now, they add three to five years onto their lifespan with exercise. See, you don't get old from years, you get old from inactivity. Now they're getting these people up and around, swimming and walking and weight training, get them taking vitamins, get normalizing their weight. They're adding wonderful, not actual years onto their life, what they are doing, but they're adding life to their years. Now, I know you think it's all about perspiration, but I have to tell you, personally for me, you are an inspiration. Thank you. I love that kissing, no calories. <laughs> <laughs>
Isn't he great? He's very inspiring. Oh, he was great. He was so much fun. John. I hope I can be that great when I get to be that oh, age. Oh, me too. All that exercise. Next, we'll join Mary McDougal, who is John's wife, in the kitchen right after a short break. You know, I was there when Dr. King shared his dream with the world. I have a dream today. And I was there when we launched Men to the Moon. Lift off. I was even there when Mark McGuire broke the home run record. Yep, I've seen a lot in my day. Thanks to television, of course. <laughs> What is in this package holds the key to longer life. Its secrets have been coveted since the beginning of time. Some think it's the original fountain of youth, but as valuable as it is, all the money in the world can't buy it because it's free. From the National Institute on Aging, the exercise guide for older people. Get your copy while they last. 1-800-222-2225. They call them the golden years, and for many seniors, they are. But for too many others, retirement is like a prison. Do you have any jacks? The difference? This couple saved for their retirement, and this couple didn't. It's your choice. Choose to save. Call for free information and start saving for your retirement today. Because your retirement can truly be your golden years. Oh, for 92. Try that. What? Oh, 92. We're never gonna get it. Hey, I got an idea. What's your father's birthday? Eight, oh, five. No good. Try your mother's. If you think Four. your kids aren't smart enough... Bingo. ...to find your handgun... ...please, think again. Lasagna has always been one of my favorite dishes, but when I found out about all the cheese, all the fat, all the cholesterol, I was really stuck until Mary figured out a way to make it healthy. And you're going to learn how to make a great lasagna that tastes just as good as the old lasagna, in fact, even better, and it's healthy for you. And it's also easy to make. It well, is. That's even it better. is. It's well, very easy. That's, a, that's the best part of all. It has when to I be used easy. to make this, I used cottage cheese, uh -huh. and I put the spinach in along with some onion powder and garlic powder. Well, I substituted tofu. Oh, so this is tofu. Up. Here. This is to tofu oh, with, with spinach. frozen spinach that uh -huh. you press all the liquid well, that out. Makes, that's easy because yes. it's frozen. Okay. Then you add a little onion powder and garlic powder. Uh -huh. Mix it all up. And you put it right into the right powders into, right in right there. Into that. Mm -hmm. So it gives it some flavor. And tofu is America's new favorite food, you know. <laughs> People are, you know, oh, the per, tofu to prevent breast tofu cancer, everywhere. tofu to prevent prostate cancer, tofu to prevent heart disease. Are you complaining? No, no, it's, <laughs> I think it's good. What I'm, what I'm saying is, you know, she's real trendy with this recipe. Yeah, so we know that Mary's very hip. So, mm -hmm. now let me show you how easy it is to make. Let's see, okay. yeah. You can buy bottled, fat-free pasta sauce in the store. Oh, okay. Or you can make your own. Mm -hmm. And you use a little bit. Oh, you just put in it the right bottom in there. of your pan like this. Uh huh. Okay, we're gonna just kind of leave it there. Just a little there. bit. Okay. Okay. And then you take uncooked, uncooked noodles, lasagna noodles. Oh. Okay. okay. And you spread this out a little bit along the bottom. Now these aren't whole wheat. Will you eat them, John? Yes, as a matter of fact, I will eat them, Mary. <laughs> they are just perfectly fine. Okay, just because add all just the other good out. ingredients in there. But it would be better if you could find whole wheat. Can you find whole wheat? Or spinach? You can, you can find spinach. Right. Uh, but then you have too much spinach, and, probably. And you can oh, find no, whole wheat lasagna noodles. Yeah, now if that you I think like. about it, I remember we used to do it with whole but wheat. But this uh -huh. is very familiar to people. Yes, to it have is. The, the simple. Um, noodles. And, and Mary, you have to think about this as a little bit of a special meal, too, in the sense mm -hmm. that you're using tofu, which is 54% uh, fat. Oh, okay, so it's a, it's a rich it's, one. It's a, it's a little richer. And, yeah, uh, but lasagna is. Yeah. Well, yeah. you can find, you know, light tofu, which uh -huh. is less fat. Less still fat. Mary, what is this over here? That this looks is soy, it's soy, soy mozzarella cheese. 90% fat, some? Mary. And you can find... Can I try it? <laughs> <laughs> Do we need it all? Fat. Can I eat it? You can try some. Mmm, mm -hmm. it's really good. You just can't tell the difference. You really can't. Mm -mm. And but the fat is a much healthier fat. Mm -hmm. Well, and then you just go ahead and you, and you layer it just like just regular layer it lasagna. Just like regular lasagna. Mm -hmm. Well, that's we're great. Now, do you put this. these on here? And then we're going to lay those just over the top of this. Just over the top? 
And how many layers do you usually do? I know because I the magic of television do, work. Um, uh, two layers, and I usually finish with a layer of noodles, and we'll show you how that works. Great. Can I help you with this? Sure. Yeah, we'll just get this going. And so this the is the other thing about that tofu cheese that you ought to know is it doesn't have the dairy protein, which a lot of people are allergic to. Right. Uh huh. And so that helps. It has much less uh, environmental contaminants. No, okay. and, and tofu cheese chemicals. is different than soy cheese. No, or this no, is soy yes. cheese. Did I call it tofu cheese? Well, some some soy cheeses are made with soy milk. Some soy cheeses are made with tofu. Okay. Well, either and one. And then of you pour this be, over this, right? And then you do. Yeah. And then you do another layer. Another layer of noodles and another okay. layer of each of those things. Okay, so now we know that. Okay. Just like that. Right. Now we'll lay our noodles. We'll layer. There. Lay our noodles again. Okay. And then we and do And then that. if you want to, you Just could, you know, break this break off it and up. cover it all up. But they do expand. Oh, they, oh okay. When they, when they oh, get cooked. That's good to know. Because you don't have to cook them ahead of Mary, time. this is so fast, this should be in your quick and easy cookbook. <laughs> <laughs> It is should it? be. No, it's, it's not. It's, it's actually, it's a, a fairly new recipe. I'm going to reach. Now, okay. what is this? Is this a um, grated soy topping? Is this sort of... That's um, a, like a Parmesan. Lemon Parmesan. Oh, this is great. And that's going to go over the top. Well, I have to try it because okay. we know I have to try everything. So, let me see. Here's a taste test. Mmm. Well, it's not quite as salty as Parmesan cheese, but it is really good. We used to we used to put a, a jar on the table that yeah. had a pea on it. It was an old pepper jar, and the kids thought it stood for Parmesan cheese. Oh. And we <laughs> so used you're tricking your children. They didn't know the difference. They, <laughs> thought, it was, they, they thought, thought it was the same, same old thing. thing. Okay, okay and then we're do this. finished with that. Okay. Now and then we'll put what do you... the cheese on again. Okay. And then comes the Parmesan cheese? No, that goes on the top. Oh. All right. After you put on your last layer of noodles. So, you know, this would be a fun dish to make with your daughter. I know. Sydney would love this yeah. because she loves to put ingredients on. Oh, and she could do it, too. You yeah. Could just layer all the all this cheese on the top. Uh, see, here. you said you didn't have anybody to make you dinner like <laughs> I do. <laughs> I know. There you I go. Said, you just get your daughter to I work. Said, I would eat like this all the time if I had Mary in the kitchen with me. And she would come to my house and just live with me instead of John. <laughs> <laughs> I cook all of my meals. Cook all your meals. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> but we can't I know you won't we give can't her trade up. Sydney. <laughs> We can share a name, and if he won't come, to be with me. Okay. No, no more, no more. No, on top. Now, now we're going to put another layer of noodles. One more layer of noodles, and then we pop it in the oven for how well, long? It takes about an hour, an hour and fifteen minutes or so. Mm -hmm. And then I'll break that one. Put it on. The there top. we go. Okay. And, and then we're going to cover with the rest of it with a sauce. And this is just an, an organic sauce mm -hmm. that you that you picked it's up. Fat free. Fat free. Mm -hmm. Fat free. Lots of lots of healthy tomatoes um, in there. Most natural food stores sell it. No. No. Just <laughs> not. You first have I'm to. I'm so flatten excited about this. Flatten this out a little bit. Oh, we have to flatten it out. Okay. Cover it. Make sure all the noodles are well covered. Otherwise, they're going right, to get they tough. Right. They won't get. And then you have, and you bake it for a long time because you're not make, cooking mm -hmm. the noodles first. You yes. You cover it with. Um, Parchment paper and then some foil. Yes. Okay. Do and you, you cook uh, it at what temperature? 350. 350. And for? then you, for about an hour. Mm -hmm. And then you um, uncover it and let it rest for a few minutes before you serve it so that it, the sauce isn't Can, too runny. Uh huh. And then through the magic of television, here we have uh, it. Looks delicious. All cooked and ready to go. Can we, can we dig we into it? Serve a little bit of it here. Oh, great. So you can fry it. Okay, this would be great. All right, let's see. I picked a great All time right, well, we're... to serve this. I'm starving. <laughs> I know. Well, um, we're going to eat this, and um, stay with us. We'll be right back. Here, John, you can have a fork. <laughs> and you can have the first bite. <laughs> with my active life, I need to keep myself fit. And a healthy diet helps me do just that. Some Szechuan tofu, pasta primavera, or my own favorite, cold soba noodles with sesame sauce. The more vegetarian meals you eat, the healthier you'll be. So be stronger and last longer. Tonight, make it vegetarian. Do it for someone you love. For more information, write to Physicians Committee for Responsible Medicine or visit their website at www.pcrm.org. You might think by exercising, eating healthy, and not smoking, you can prevent heart disease, right? Wrong. Lifestyle changes can only improve your odds, not prevent heart disease. But why worry? Heart disease is not a problem for women. Wrong again. One out of two women die from heart disease. It's the number one killer. Call the National Heart Foundation at 1-800-437-2423. Get the truth.
Every sunburn during childhood significantly increases your risk of skin cancer. Protect your children. Protect yourself. 35 years ago, John Glenn was the first American to orbit the Earth. He couldn't have done it if he wasn't in excellent condition. At 77, he still is, mainly because he exercises, which is why NASA can send him up there again. Wouldn't it be great to be in such good shape? Launch your exercise program today with this free exercise guide from the National Institute on Aging, 1-800-222-2225. I've always instinctively, automatically done high carbohydrate, low fat. I look at the chart, if it says zero fat, I, which includes La Brea bread, I thought all these wonderful things that I love, cabbage soup, I just do high carb, low fat, and it gives me energy for running and also energy for my work. No, I don't eat well at all. I eat bad. I eat a lot of junk food and everything. I love ice cream and cake. I eat very high fiber, very boring, uh, protein, and lots of raw vegetables and fruits. That's where the most vitamins can be found and kept. Mm. <laughs> you know, if people could just have a taste of this, they'd understand by including a few more vegetarian meals in their daily meal plan, all they give up is bad health, not good taste. This is absolutely it is. fantastic. It's very good, Mary. It's very yummy. You get a lot really of pleasure like out of doing this, don't I you? I do. I really like to do this. And it's, it's fun to adapt recipes and make them taste good. Well, I'm sure, yeah, because people think that vegetarian cooking is so bland and boring, and it's really not. Not when you cook your way. No, well, most people think of vegetarian <laughs> cooking as salads. As salads. <laughs> there is no cooking. And hard work. They think about it as hard, hard work, work, too, yeah. and it's not that either. Look at all the colors that are in it's this beautiful. recipe. And if you would like this recipe, this lasagna recipe, you can write to McDougal MD, Box 320, Newberry Park, California, 91319. Thank you for being here and cooking this for us, Mary. It's yummy. Goodbye, everybody. We'll see you next time.